Okay, call this meeting to order for July the 21st, 2020, 7 p.m. Results agenda for the July 21st, 2020 regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Moved by Councilor White, seconded by Deputy Mayor Antoni. All in favor? Carried. Result of the minutes of the July 7, 2020 special meeting, July 7, 2020 regular council meeting, and the July 14, 2020 committee of the whole meeting be received and approved. Moved by Deputy Mayor Antoni, seconded by Councilor Morio. All in favor? Opposed? It's very Okay, so number four, moving on, uh, receptions and delegation hearings. Our first of all, uh, we have with us our CFO, uh, Mr. Benita, Pasco Hardy and Company, uh, Mr. Hardy, uh, to go over the 2019 Consolidated Financial Statements and Audit Report. So, uh, Mr. Hardy, are you first, or is uh, uh, Mr. Benita going to go first? Okay. <clears throat> but I need to be able to share my screen. Okay, just one moment. Guess while well, she's getting that hooked up tonight, we're having some technical difficulties. So for those that are watching our video or YouTube uh, later on, we do apologize, but we're not live tonight. Okay. Okay, so I'll be presenting the consolidated financial statements and consolidated means that every amount reported is a consolidation of all the town's funds, general, utility, capital reserves, as well as all controlled entities and proportionate shares of government partnerships. Controlled entities are the kind of and support developers, government partnerships are the voucher recruitment fund, the library, recreation commission, airport commission, planning district, and rise. Uh, the next page is the statement of responsibility. And uh, the consolidated financial statements are the responsibility of management. So I prepared them, and the uh, auditors will give their opinion later. Jumping to the statement of financial position, uh, which is page six cash and temporary investments increased by 1.6. We increased from 1.6 million to 2 million. Much of this is held in reserves and by controlled entities and government partnerships. The months receivable went down 600,000. There was a million dollar receivable in 2018 for, from Clean Water and Wastewater Fund and Manitoba Water Services Board for utility capital projects. So that was received in 2019. <coughs> Long-term debt, 6.7 million, consists of uh, the municipal office wellness center, firefighter equipment, 12th and third paving, which was new in 2019, and the Ross and Hayes lift stations. Uh, the deferred government transfers of 3.19 million. Is the federal and provincial funding that's repayable if the wellness center is closed before December 31, 2025? And the next page is the consolidated statement of operations. And so you see the revenues from your property taxes, grants, and Google, user fees, permits, licenses, etc. Other revenue, 
23,000 includes cash donations, penalties and interest, amortization of prepaid local improvement levies and supplier rebates. The water and sewer revenue was higher in 2018, 2.5 million because it included uh, 1.1 million grants from Clean Water and Wastewater Fund and Manitoba Water Services Board for the 6th Avenue lift and for the water treatment plant upgrade and well number four development. And grants for the province of Manitoba, 876,000 includes uh, 325,000 municipal operating grant, 454,000 urban policing. Yeah. 23,000 handy van operating, 41,000 library operating, 16,000 for all upgrades. Grants other includes uh, 431,000 federal gas tax, which was the one time doubling in 2019, 16,000 for all upgrades, and 345,000 municipal contributions to partnerships. Their expenses of protective services is up uh, 100,000 from the previous year because of the increase in RCMP costs. The rest of the expenses there are pretty much in line with the previous year. The statement of change in net assets. Uh, net assets is uh, Financial assets minus liabilities, and so the, there's a net debt sitting there of eight million dollars, which means that the town will need to raise eight million dollars in, in future to uh, cover the present liabilities. Next page is their cash flows. So uh, two point one million came from operating transactions. One point five million was used to buy tangible capital assets. 34,000 was uh, went towards investments and 259,000 went towards uh, paying off debt and uh, some borrowing for the 12th and 3rd. So the cash increase from 1.6 million to 2.0 million. Under the notes, uh, basis of accounting is accrual basis, not cash basis. Tangible capital assets are amortized over their estimated useful lives, and they're all listed there at the bottom of page 11. And measurement uncertainty at the bottom of page 12 uh, means that there are some estimates and assumptions in, in the Figures that are particularly amortization of tangible capital assets and based on estimated useful lives. The accrual of the landfill closure liabilities based on estimated future cash flows using an assumed rate of inflation to the expected date of closure discounted to the financial statement date using an assumed long term average or rate. And likewise, the accrual of the pre retirement bonus entitlements based on estimated future cash flows using an assumed rate of inflation to expected dates of retirement, discounted to the financial statement date using an assumed long-term average or a rate. So we see lots of references to assumptions and estimates there. And uh, the auditors will give their opinion on estimates. That was all the notes that I wanted to highlight. Jumping to page 24. Actually, just one note here under commitments. A well controlled building, the town uh, commenced construction of a well controlled building in 2019 at an estimated cost of 1.1 million. The town expected to receive funding of 136,000 from the Water Services Board and to borrow the remaining 964,000. And uh, in 2020, the town completed construction at a total cost of 1.2 million. We received the funding of 136,000 from Manitoba Water Services Board, followed the 963,000 from RBC Life Insurance, repayable over 20 years at 3.4% interest, and paid the remaining 
paying cost of 118000 from utility operating nominal surplus.
accounting standards that the municipal act follows, and those are different from public sector accounting standards. So this schedule converts the financial plan according to the municipal act to the budget for PSAP accounting principles. And schedule 11, analysis of taxes on the roll, and schedule 12, analysis of tax levy, self-explanatory. Schedule 13 is just the general operating fund expenses. Uh, the, the previous schedule of expenses that schedule 3 was uh, consolidated. This is just the general operating fund. And then the final page is the reconciliation of the annual surplus deficit from the Municipal Act, which was zero for both general and utility because we, Council uh, decided to transfer whatever surplus there was and left in the general to cover the previous years of deficit. And the utility council decided to transfer the surplus to reserve but for under the according to the municipal act but, and this show, the rest of these lines convert all the things that are different from civil act to PSAP and so under PSAP there's a consolidated uh, surplus of 66,000 That's the end of my presentation. Were there any questions? Any questions to Mr. Gadia? <clears throat> Councilor Deloria, I can't see you, but maybe we can hear you. I might have lost him. Okay, if there's no uh, questions, then uh, thank you, Mr. Gadina, for your report. And we will now hear from uh, Mr. Hardy. Are you ready for me now? Yes. Can you hear me okay? I can, or we can. Okay, so the... Um uh, Terry uh, presented the, uh, the finances statements. Uh, our part is uh, to issue an independent auditor's report on those financial statements that have been prepared by Terry, uh, who is considered to be uh, prepared then by management. So the auditor report, Terry's got it up on the screen here, starts out with uh, the opinion paragraph now and it indicates that we have audited these consolidated financial statements that Terry just presented and all the different statements that uh, are comprised in those uh, set of audited financial statements. And in our opinion, the accompanying financial statements, the consolidated financial statements, do present fairly in all material respects the financial position of the town as at its year end, December 31st, 2019 and the results of its operations and cash flows for the year that ended in accordance with Canadian public sector accounting standards or as we've been calling them uh, PSAP. The um, basis for that opinion is then the next paragraph. So it indicates that what we did was we conducted our audit in accordance with a set of standards that we call Canadian generally accepted auditing standards. And so our responsibilities under those standards uh, are further described further on in the auditor's responsibilities. Uh, we are independent. We have to indicate that we're independent of the town in accordance with ethical requirements um, that are relevant to our audit. And that we have fulfilled our other ethical responsibilities in accordance with these requirements. So we believe, and this is all part of our opinion, we believe that the audited evidence that we did obtain is sufficient and appropriate to provide a basis for our opinion, which as you saw in the earlier paragraph was an unqualified opinion, with no reservation for qualification. 
So the next paragraphs just carry on with what are the responsibilities for management and those charged with governance. So um, Terry and his staff are management and town council is those charged with governance for these statements. And so management is responsibility to prepare and fairly present the facility that's statements. And uh, I must uh, you know, thank Terry. He does an excellent job of putting the uh, financial statement presentation together. And it makes life much easier, uh, much, straight, much more straightforward for the auditor to just do a pure audit. We're just auditing the financial statements and everything that's required to create those financial statements. So then in preparing these statements, uh, management is responsible for assessing the town's ability to continue as a going concern and uh, who's made that um, uh, determination that there's no issue regarding a going concern basis and um, therefore there's no need for any comments in the financial statements to do with going concern. Um, those charged with governance uh, of the financial statements being town council uh, are responsible for overseeing the town's financial reporting process. And part of that is being uh, present today uh, to have these financial statements and the resulting reports presented to you. Uh, the next paragraph, as I said, will come later, is what are our responsibilities as auditors uh, for the auditing of these consolidated financial statements? And um, there's a, a lot of uh, things that we have as our responsibilities, and one of them is um, uh, obtaining an understanding of internal control. Another one is evaluating the appropriateness of the accounting policies. Uh, that were used and a reasonableness of accounting estimates, as Terry indicated, that would be part of what we're reporting on. So those estimates for things like the amortization of capital assets and um, such estimates as that, we determined that management's estimates uh, are are within line. They uh, still allow us to uh, present a clear audit opinion because we see no reason uh, if there's any problem with any of those estimates that have been made. We also have to conclude um, of the appropriateness of management's uh, use of the going concern basis of accounting. And again, we indicated there's no issues surrounding the continued operation in the foreseeable future of the town of Swan River. And finally, to evaluate the overall presentation and the structure and the content of these financial statements, including all those disclosures, all those notes that Terry um, have touched on, and whether the consolidated financial statements represent the underlying transactions and events in a manner that achieves fair presentation. We have some guidelines to work with um, with the province of Manitoba, but we're also relying on uh, the accounting uh, principles that are in place for the preparation of public sector uh, financial statements. And that we communicate with those charged with governance. Uh, and that's what we're doing today. Um, that we are discussing not only these financial statements, but there's another letter coming up uh, where we will uh, discuss how the findings, the audit findings, uh, if there's anything in there that we need to bring to the attention of the council. And uh, that is the audit report. Uh, now you'll notice that it does say draft for discussion purposes only, and that's because it's been presented now to council. And after your deliberation this evening, um, if you approve these financial statements, then uh, I will sign the audit report for Terry, and uh, tomorrow they will be uh, official financial statements. Anybody have any questions on the audit report? Any questions to Mr. Hardy? <clears throat> okay. Then there is um, there's one other, and I'm not sure if Terry has it uh, able to be uh, presented on screen or if you have a copy. Uh, but what it's called is our audit findings letter. And when we're when we have completed our audit and we have um, uh, prepared the uh, audit report, we also are uh, required to report to those charged with governance uh, our audit findings. And as you can see, uh, the status of the audit is uh, once we get a signed representation letter uh, uh, from management, 
and we've completed our discussions with council, which we're doing right now, and we obtain evidence that council has approved these consolidated financial statements, then we will uh, sign a data audit report, which can be done uh, as soon as this evening, and when I'm in the office tomorrow, um, I can sign off on that audit report. Uh, we disclosed what significant risks that we may have identified during the audit, but we didn't identify. Um, starting on the next page, significant matters that arose during the audit. Did we make any changes to our audit plan? No. Um, sometimes as you're going along in the audit, you may see an area that you want to concentrate on, uh, but our original audit plan was unchanged. We did not find anything that we needed to look at any closer than what we had originally planned to do in the audit. Uh, we did not identify any other significant matters that we need to bring to your attention as a result of our audit testing. Uh, we didn't encounter, not only did we not encounter any significant difficulties, we didn't have encounter any difficulties during our audit. Um, Terry and his staff, uh, Terry's just an excellent person to, uh, to work with in the audit very cooperative, provides us with all of the information that we need on a very timely basis, so thanks. Terry, once again. Um, those comments on those accounting practices, some of those accounting policies, um, Terry's got them all listed out, uh, the policies that the town of Small River follows, and we did not recommend or see any changes that needed to be made in any of those accounting policies. Uh, accounting estimates, and that's one of the things that Terry touched on as one of the notes in the financial statement, and it's mentioned in our audit report. Uh, the types of things like allowance for deductible accounts, inventories, deferred revenue, amortization, uh, resulting in the book value of capital assets, and we're satisfied with the estimates that were made by management. We propose no changes. And uh, any significant financial statements, uh, disclosures, um, as Terry touched on, those deferred government transfers that are described in note 13, and um, those have to do with the, uh, the well set, uh, construction and uh, grants that were received. And um, we, um, we normally would accumulate any uncorrected misstatements during the audit if there are any, but there were not any in the town of Swan River audit. Carrying on to the final page, um, uh, any deficiencies in internal control. Uh, the town of Swan River has a very highly operating, effective system of internal control, and we did not uh, identify any deficiencies in that whole system of internal controls. And a written representation, there is a separate representation letter that will be uh, signed off by management and all of the different requests that we have made for all of the different materials and documentation that we need for the audit uh, were all given to us and uh, we have um, no issues sir, in any of that. And uh, we didn't identify any other matters that we need to bring to your attention at this time. Uh, we'd like to thank management and staff for all the assistance that they uh, provide to us during the audit. Um, it's, it's a pleasure uh, to work with the staff in the town of Storm River and um, results, final result is today, presenting the uh, audit report and the financial statement. So uh, thank you uh, very much, everyone. All right, if there's no other questions for Mr. Arya, thank you also, Mr. Arya, and your uh, kind words to our administration who have done an outstanding job again, and that to Mr. Canada, who, who spends uh, a lot of time making sure that this report is, or all work done in our uh, administration is done uh, in a proper way. So we do appreciate those words. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. 4.2, resolve that pursuits of sections 152.3 of the municipal act comes to the committee and calls the meeting to the public. Uh, this is discussed the Swan Valley Business Consortium uh, delegation, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. We're now at camera. 
Okay, so uh, we're on camera. Uh, I have five receptions and protections, uh, communications, 6.1, resulting with building permits, 47.20 through 53.20, with a total estimated value of $128,700 being received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Resolved with a letter from Mark Allard, Director of Manitoba Infrastructure, Engineering and Operations Division, dated July 15, 2020, be received as information. Moved by Councillor Morio, seconded by Prepare with Tony. Uh, this is a letter that was just uh, we received after um, CEO Crow had asked for a, um, or former Crow uh, CEO uh, asked for a, uh, I guess, uh, if we can get a commitment from MIT about the uh, resurfacing of Main Street West. And obviously, we got the letter from, uh, from the department, but that doesn't mean that we. We will stop there. We'll definitely lobby uh, Mr. Wolchuk, who has been lobbying, I believe. Uh, I spoke to him about a month ago about this, and also with the minister when we get a chance, perhaps in the fall time. Councillor Gray. Um, I was going to make that very point that uh, are three, three points. The first is that we should respond by expressing disappointment in the Bureau's decision not to completed completed project that they would have completed previously except for our request to defer it. And so we should express this point. The second um, is that uh, we should of course continue um, asking for it. And I thought we were going to look for them to contribute it by way of um, some infrastructure money that had been developed for COVID. So maybe we should. Have. But thirdly, exactly the point you just made, which is that when if we decide to go to the city for the purpose of logging, one of the things that we clearly want to meet with, the one we want with, is Manitoba infrastructure, Mr. Manitoba infrastructure, and about that repaving of that particular section of road. Firstly, it's a, it needs to be repaved anyway, and secondly. It is stunning that we would have to fight about this. Any further comment? <laughs> All in favor? Seven point one. Result of the director of public works report be received. Moved by Councillor White. Seconded by Deputy Mayor Tony. Discussion. Councilor Gloria, we have you back. No discussion on Councilor Morio. Um, I guess even in the, I guess, uh, when our facilities engineering, uh, the public uh, opening of the aquatic center is, are we going to get a report on that at one point? See how that went? Or? We will, yeah, special meeting for next week to sort of not getting uh, all that information gathered to present. Perfect, thanks. Councilor White. I see you're providing information to the uh, new bylaw officer. So, wonder how that's working out. It's great. Yeah, office is okay and getting out there. So, no, it's going to be good. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. For the discussion, Councilor Gray. Three okay. things. The first is in response to Councilor Mario's concern. I think we are planning to have a committee for me next Tuesday, and we expect to have that there. One of the things we're going to discuss is what the criterion should be. Uh, and then we'll go through the, uh, we'll see if, if, if that matches up with what we're doing that. I think we're going to told there's a significant um, <coughs> variation in the prices. And so um, we're going to need to be sure what it is we want to achieve, um, if just to make sure. Um, the second is I want to thank administration and, and particularly the public works department for maybe, maybe I believe it's recreation. I'm not sure who cut the tree down, but there was a dead tree in Lincoln Park. And as many of you know, I attend every day virtually unless it's raining in Lincoln Park. And there's a large group of others who attend with me. And there was a universal complaint about the possibility that the dead tree would fall on the number. Um, and so they were extraordinarily happy. Now, I have told them that that's my one tree that gets to come down for the entire 
term. So I won't be asking for more trees. Oh, there's a branch that's going over the, the uh, horseshoe pits. So somebody's going to get a call that I give them all of your phone numbers. So one of you for that. Um, so the, oh, the, uh, I can confirm that the um, bylaw officer is up and running and working. Um, in fact, he sent me a letter because the law that I was supposed to be transferring to Northwest Community Council, and so I assumed they'd taken care of it, was not taken care of. And so I got a letter telling me to cut my damn grass. And so, uh, and, and I think it's a fantastic letter. I think it's very respectful, it's kind, it, 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 but it's very forceful and, and it's very clear. I, I Firstly, I think he did his job and I commend it. I think it was fantastic. Yeah, awesome. and, it was everything I had. Okay. Uh, I, I guess every councillor gets, uh, in, in their term, gets one tree because I, I had yeah. my first term too. So <clears throat> there you go. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Seven two one. Result of the fire chief report ready to receive, be received. Moved by. And Mayor Wadoni, seconded by Council Memorial. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Okay, CEO reports and Council, so I'll start with Council White. It's been a pretty slow week. Uh, the Cal, Cal uh, meeting, which was uh, community the whole, uh, the record report was quite uh, revealing, to say the least. There's some things that we can work on. Lots of reasons for optimism, which I like, and a reason to, uh, to make ourselves more efficient. And we can always do that. And the discussion on RISE would appear two of our major partners, or one of our major partners outside, that was uh, evident that evening, and the protective service meeting relative to Livingston and providing them uh, services. Uh, just a, an aside, tomorrow I'm taking uh, two representatives from Travel Manitoba on a tour of the Duck Mountain area, specifically in Welma Lake, and talking about sport fish activities and trying to explain to them why Arctic Char will bring people like nowhere else in Manitoba to our area. So uh, that's about it for me for now. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Gray. Sure. Um, well, I'm not sure it's publicly known, but uh, RISE has offered to, and a person has accepted uh, the deputy chair. I'm sure it's going to come this morning. Um, a candidate. There were uh, three candidates who were interviewed. Um, each of them brought strengths and, and lesser strengths, including this candidate. But um, I think it was um, nearly unanimous. It was, I think it was, that this was the, that we had the best interview, which is the criterion we could create in advance was going to be the basis upon which we were hired, which was the strength of the interview. So um, I, I look forward to working with Ms. Griffin, great, this is Helen, not related, um, who is the and I'm going to be the economic development officer. She uh, has incredible energy. Um, and there are some other challenges facing the rise. But, and I know that you're meeting tomorrow with Mountain. Um, if you could slide in, uh, I would request that we're going to consider coming back to Rise. That would be helpful. That would be a good opportunity for us. Okay. Um, the second is the community. The community the whole meeting was um, only about a third of the way through my agenda, as you may know. Um, I have a lot usually to say and things that I have thought through. Um, we have some issues coming up, and there's a resolution. Uh, it's not entirely exactly what I thought we were going to have, but we'll have some adjustments to it. Uh, but there is some significant issues coming forward. Um, and I don't know if we want to talk about um, there was uh, a crazy rumor that, the, that one of our facilities wasn't going to open. It is not true. And it needs to be uh, clear that we have a plan to deal with our facilities in an orderly, thoughtful way. Um, and as if, if issues arise, firstly, we will let the community know, and secondly, we'll address them. That's how this council has agreed to operate. Um, lastly, I want to commend um, the groups that put up the flags. They are the subject of some considerable debate around the community. Um, some people love them, others less so, but um, they spark discussion, I'll tell you that. So, anyway, 
those are the three things I wanted to comment. I would, should say settlement service, I think, in the next two weeks or so, is likely to have um, a, another event like they have. They had about 85 participants up to the last time. Um, and so we'll see how that goes. That's it. First of all, I have to apologize that I wasn't available for um, the last Cal meeting, um, and I did not uh, review the the uh, the notes on it that are in all that. So I apologize for that. So I'm a little bit out of the loop on some of the information. Well, well, thank you for the time. That's all the contribution. Very generous. <laughs> I'll go back to the notes. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. White, Councillor White, for being a part of Travel Manitoba tomorrow. Um, and just to let you know that Valley of the Mountains tourism um, and RISE did pay for RISE. Yes, RISE. This was last year's 2018's project, 2019's project that they're finishing off this year. So it's a the woman or the lady that's coming out is part of batter or a battered suitcase. I forgot what it is. Something suitcase, beaten suitcase, I think. Um, and she travels around Manitoba um, and does this very thing for every region. So Swan River is our region, and this is what they're doing. So um, we should look forward to a great presentation coming out of that. Um, and I just want to talk a little bit of, quickly about Travel Manitoba. If you haven't noticed, um, there is tons of information now coming to um, on social media about um, Swan River, about our, our area, um, and about our surrounding community. So I s strongly suggest, if you haven't seen any, just type it in really quickly. And since Travel Manitoba is controlling all of the funding, we're seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of activities and a lot of funding coming our way, whereas prior it was um, being funded from Travel Manitoba to Parkland Tourism and we didn't see anything coming from there. So now that they're controlling it, there is a lot of cool things happening. Um, an example, I guess, is coming from Dauphin Gilbert Plains area um, that they just announced was a, uh, um, a settlement, a Ukrainian settlement that has been around since uh, that was built in the 1800s and was in operation until 1990 that they showcased um, I had an opportunity to visit it. Uh, the gentleman talking or giving the tour there said it was crazy since Travel Manitoba included that in some of their marketing. And we're seeing a lot of the same thing for our area. So kudos to that. Uh, the RISE board did hire an EDO. Um, I unfortunately missed the introduction meeting that she had with the chair. Um, but we're looking forward to her starting um, I'm not sure that I'm really allowed to say a lot about her credentials on and it, during open time right now because I'm not sure where she's at um, in divulging information on the other end. So I'm not really going to talk about that. Uh, but what I can say is the, the female that we did hire is full of energy, more energy than I've seen in probably five or six people combined. Um, so I'm pretty uh, very optimistic that we're going to see some amazing things coming out of RISE. So be prepared, it's coming. Um, that's all I have. Okay, good. Um, thank you for that. And uh, just on the uh, RISE, definitely, as anybody else in, in this room and, and probably the communities too, are looking forward to the, to the changes that we'll see with RISE and the future of RISE and what RISE can do with having a proper person in place and definitely we're looking forward to that. Um, with the Tour of Manitoba, uh, I did check out some of that and I was, I, I was impressed. Impressed, yeah, good word. Uh, because you're right, in the past we didn't get that, um, that perspective or with an invitation for people to get out there to see what we have here. And it's not just the valley, you know, like you said, there's areas, you know, in the parkland that are, are very, uh, important uh, pieces for people to go and uh, check out our history and, and what we have to offer. So, you know, it's really good stuff. Council Memorial. Um, last Tuesday, I had the Committee of the Whole where we had an informative uh, presentation and started a discussion on recreation services in the Thomas Wander River in the Valley, which uh, I look forward to. We continued the discussion on that topic and the challenges and the options. But, uh, 
need to be addressed. Um, also, I <coughs> noted that the Northwest Maple Council and manageable 150 flags went up. Um, it was very appreciative to, to see that, um, to signify a significant individual in Manitoba's history, along with this such a significant date for, for Manitoba. So um, it shows, uh, I think, our community's uh, willingness to be inclusive to all communities and um, backgrounds as we know we support our settlement services and things like that. So. Um, from a flight, like, but I had nothing but positive reviews from people that talked to me on that. So uh, it shows uh, that we're willing to uh, be inclusive and recognize our, our heritage and not. Okay. Okay. Is that Yes. Thank you. Um, Councillor Deloria. Um, since last meeting, uh, I've had the uh, last Monday, we had the. Uh, Planning district meeting, we give uh, second reading to the uh, re redesignation of the land uh, to the south of the NW there that is owned by the uh, Northwest Métis Council. So that will be going to the minister's desk now for uh, for his approval, and then it will come back to the planning district for third reading. Uh, other than that, I have no, uh, no nothing else to report. Okay. Thank you. Um, just on top of the things that I already mentioned, is, uh, some of those things that was added, and, uh, just something I can think of the last two weeks that I had attended. Um, I did attend the Swan Valley Stamp Peters AGM on the uh, on the 19th, and uh, the Stamp Peters, I think there was an article in the paper a couple of weeks ago about the state of uh, the Stamp Peters and uh, the financial uh, stress that they're in, and, and I can't put more of a red line underneath that stress um, where the staff leaders are and, and where they may be going. So <clears throat> they have some tough decisions and, and obviously some a lot of fundraising dollars they have to, to find as far as uh, to keep the team afloat. They're in, in, in a tough position. Obviously with this year with COVID, um, they've had a shortened season uh, with the uh, rodeo not uh, being uh, held this year. They had uh, a huge uh, piece of uh, revenue that has been distinguished from them because of, of the, those fundraising efforts. So a lot of things have been going against them. And uh, th there are some, I think, some highlights that they're looking towards, but uh, to deal with some of the financial issues that moving forward are, are going to be some tough play to decisions, I guess, and, and they need uh, the community to get behind them and help them. So the board does have some tough decisions and, and where they'll go with this. But I certainly hope that people out there can maybe uh, get out there and support the St. Peters if it means buying a season ticket or whatever that might be uh, to get out there and help out because I think that the St. Peters are a big piece of our community and an important piece uh, to our valley. So uh, I wish them all the best in what we can do for them. So that would be it for me. Um, well, somebody else is paying off that. I was going to go to the uh, acting CEO. Uh, I was going to do uh, address the staff issues because I was going to actually cover it in, my, in the recreation issue. Oh, okay. But I can cover campus in that. There are three things that I wanted to comment because I attended as well. Okay. Um, the first is that um, I'm hoping that they have, a, they have a couple of important members, and I'm hoping that that board will make some serious decisions. There are at least two obvious changes to expenditures that would dramatically improve their likelihood of success. And absent that, they will have a difficult time going forward on a permanent basis. And so they need to address that. <coughs> um, the second is I would anticipate, just alerting council, I don't know this, there's not that I know to magic ball or anything you know, he's told me, but there is a significant a payable, which is part of their debt from last year and their debt from before, which is what they owe us. That's the largest um, payable they have. I uh, and I expect that we will see a request for um, either uh, elimination of them, which would be more problematic, I think, but we'll, we'll have to talk about that, or at least deferral of them for a significant period of time. 
So I'm uh, alerting council about that that is likely to come um, and that uh, we should consider that when we um, The third is that we actually do need to get something from uh, the NJHL as to what's happening because it really will impact what's going to happen with our use of our facility. And they've been unclear at this point of what they're going to do and when they're going to start. So if we can have administration contact you just have your door the MGHL and say that we, you know, we, like every other town that has a uh, MGHL franchise, needs to have some clarity as to what their plan is. Now, it may be dependent on state four from the provincial government. If that's fine, that's fine. If that's what they say, then we'll wait for that. But at some point, we really do need to address this because we can't, we, it would be difficult, I think, for us to say we're going to open um, the facility on the basis that um, if, if, in fact, MGHL isn't going to end with that, so we then walk in that way, is it going to have games? No, we're going to have a very isolated use. I, I think we need to address that. So that's part of our, yeah. that, that was part of the, of the, of what we're going to talk about. That pool in terms of to consider uh, rationalization of services connection. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Sorry. No, that's fine. Um, Ms. Singleman. <clears throat> Yeah, I just have a report up there, so I don't know if there's any questions on anything that that is in there. Council Mario. Uh, just going to report one of your recommendations uh, for the uh, completing the asset management plan. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of it. it's either through AMM or FCM regarding their assistance that's cost free for people to help with that. So yeah, definitely just something we just just been sitting there and kind of get shoved to the side of the desk all the time, but it's really, really important for us to have that information moving forward as we make plans and the strategic planning and whatnot. So. Right, because I think it, because it's this, an organization that I think that FCM has engaged to help municipalities with that. Um, so there's no sense for you guys banging your heads or trying to figure out what the wheel is when they can pretty much tell you what it should look like and maybe provide you templates and all that stuff yeah. for that. So. Yeah, we'll get them now. Okay, question. Councilor Delory, anything from you up there? Oh, okay. Okay, so we uh, have new business 8.1. Result of the Swan Valley Planning District audited financial statements for the year ending December 31st, 2019, be received. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wood Tony, seconded by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Eight point two result of the Swan Valley Planning District 2020 budget be received and accepted. Moved by Councillor Gray. I've got a question about that. Moved by that Councillor Delora White. Seconded by Councillor Morio. Discussion, Councillor Gray. Do, do we need to accept budget? We need to approve the levy. But is it in our role to accept budget? I mean, to accept it for information, I suppose. But are, are we really? I don't know enough about it. I, I have to say, I don't know enough about the budgeting to, to make an intelligent decision. Council Delorier undoubtedly does. And I re re respect him and I expect that he has represented our interests at the uh, district planning meetings. I think Council, our Deputy Mayor Matoni's on that as well. And so I have no qualms about the fact that it's been done, but I don't remember, for instance, the RISE budget being accepted. I do remember the RISE. Um, Levy being discussed. Maybe we did. But I right now, I, now that you say it, we have. I, so, so this this is on the Swan Valley Planning District. So yeah, this is more or less just to receive. Yeah, I, that's what I think, yeah. and so that's why I'm okay. You know, actually, Councilor Delorde or or so yeah. Mr. Benita, any comment on that? 
Uh, the only comment I have, I guess, is uh, I, I guess I don't, I'm not exactly 100% sure on the protocol as far as accepting or receiving. It's always come to council, um, whether we have any ability to send it back if we don't like it, I don't know. Um, the only changes from last year is we have a new auditor and the price went up, but uh, this was the, the lowest, uh, lowest price. So uh, other, other than that, it's, this is one budget that hasn't changed much in 15 years. So my, my concern is, is exactly that it's with accepting a budget where we have I, I, not much as everybody here knows for pure rubber stamping and just saying, oh yeah, we agree. I, I, I agree it hasn't changed much, but the budget's the budget. Our issue is the levy. Uh, we have control over that. But if, what would happen if we said, no, we don't agree with the budget? Would they stop functioning? Would they listen? Well, to no. I guess, I guess on that note, if, if if we accept the budget, but not the levy, how would that work? Their, their, their budget is based off of off of whatever levy they, they need from us. Well, I have a question on the levy too, but, but it's a different question. It's not a procedural question. Okay. Uh, I came from you. Uh, no. Okay, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? Uh, I, I'm not it's able to vote on that. I, it's okay. It's fine. I don't need a recording. 8.3, resolve the Swan Valley Planning District 2020 levy of 7,239.75 cents be approved for payment. Moved by Councillor Gloria, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. Discussion. Uh, uh, I can maybe start with uh, one of the two board members, and then and then we can take any questions. Unless you have no no comments, Councillor Delorier. You're muted. You're, you're muted. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I guess I have no comment on it unless anybody has a specific question. I can try to answer it. Okay. Uh, Councilor Morio. Uh, specific question is, um, refresh my memory, is like how is the levy calculated? Um, like what is, is it a per capita or assessment or how is it's, that? Number? It's done, the, the static, Portions of the budget, things like the audit and the payment to the conservation district for administration, those are split up uh, based on uh, a, roll, a rolling average. No, that those are split up based on a per capita, and then the, the fluid portions of the budget that are based on development are, are based on a, a rolling five-year average of. of uh, of development that's going on in each municipality. Okay. Councilor Gray. Um, two things. The first is um, somebody please enlighten me. Um, what's the rationale or basis for deciding a planning district, which is entirely about the development of land on per capita? I'm, I'm missing the connection. I mean, I know why the other municipalities want it, but I'm just trying to figure out why that's the, pro I mean, why logically is that the process? And, and, and other than it's historically the win the way we did it. That is a really good question. I will uh, have to contemplate that and we will, uh, we can take a look at that uh, on, on how we do that. This may be one of the rare occasions when you came up with a really good question. Then the second question is, um, it's a policy question. When we get requests for approval of levies, just as a matter of structure, could we in addition have the calculation and the process so that when we get the rise budget, we say, here's what the assessment is. It's based on this formula and here's the calculation as a background paper. So that we that would it would be clear why we're doing it, and then if there's a an anomaly or something that we might want to address, we can address it. 
Um, and that way we are approving appropriately levies based on logical criteria. That would be great. Thank you. I, I think that's fair, and that maybe for any of the metropolitan councilors just sitting here at any of the, your committees that uh, that might come up, that might be something that uh, should be addressed. I know that if you look at the one committee I sit on, the, the vet board, it actually breaks that down exactly what Councilor Gray is, is talking about and how it's uh, distinguished and how we come up with the levy. So I think that that probably, if, if if we're not clear exactly why, then maybe we should have that or bring that to council so we can see why or how it's done. I think the process should be that when a board commission or entity that we're providing a levy to sends us a request, that prior to being placed before council, we require that board commission or entity to break out the process for development of the levy and, and the calculations. I don't know that we should have to do it, but that entity should. And it should not come to us until it's done. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. What's our friend? <laughs> uh, 8.4. Whereas the town of Stone River has reviewed the recreation department operations, and whereas it has been determined that action should be taken to increase efficiencies in the operations of the department. Therefore, we resolve that the following items be investigated further by administration. One, study of the arena structural system. Two, repair of the arena roof, west wall, cross bracing, and dehumidifier upgrades. Three, complete ass assess, ma assess management for recreation equipment and facilities to determine appropriate level of reserve and funding required. Four, prepare detailed report on playground equipment and develop policy for decommissioning of unsafe equipment. Five, tractor replacement to be considered for the 2021 capital budget. Six, develop and review further pool cost saving options. Seven, develop communication strategy to gather public input on what options the community is willing to support. This includes surveys and public meetings. Moved by Councillor Gray, second by Councillor White. Discussion, Councillor Gray. It's not entirely what we agreed. So just let me correct it slightly. The first part is that we were to, that administration was to develop a plan to um, provide for three things actually. It was um, assessment of the envelope of the um, arena, um, assessment of the structural system of the arena and the lateral drilling underneath with respect to the frost um, that we talked about, all of which would be implemented after the current um, year, usage year. Uh, the second, is that um, we were to bring back to council or uh, to bring back to council um, plans for repairs to the arena roof, the west Colbury, uh, west wall cross bracing, and it wasn't all the dehumidifier upgrades for this year. It was um, the external safety items for the dehumidifier. This year, I think about fifteen thousand dollars. And the third, fourth one was actually the CO2, that we actually have to put CO2 monitors in. Um, and, and if we don't, we have significant risk. And secondarily to that was to um, put the upgrading of the dehumidifier system in the 2021 capital budget, subject to reviews contained in number one. In number three, it is complete, except that one of the things that we'd asked was that we come back with a date by when we would have it. And I thought we sort of tentatively set September 30th, but I could be wrong. And, and if it was going to be considered whether or not that was doable. Do we have, is it going to be out? That's going to be too tight. Too tight. So yeah. what date is, are we suggesting? 
<laughs> we can do whatever date we do. Do you pick the date as long as we comply with it? October 31st. Okay. And related to the same thing was number four. And again, we had a de we we talked about let's come up with a deadline for when we're going to do that. There are two parts to that. One is the repair or report on the playground equipment, and the second is the policy. Because it, it, the policy should be easy that we have a, a, a reserve that replaces and that anything that's unsafe gets removed. But so October 30th as well? Uh, yeah. If, if, if that's not reasonable, let's change it now. That should be fine for that Okay. Um, the last, well, we, we talked about, whether, about, about discussing the pool board completely tonight and its cost savings and what we're going to do, but we just don't, we don't have the all of the RFPs in yet, so do we? Pardon me? We don't have all of the RFPs on the pool stuff. We have, don't have all the repair plans in place, do we? No, we're just going to get the age back in there. Right. Yeah. So that's going to take some time before we get to that, but we need to deal with that over the summer because we have a closing or an opening that we have to plan for in the fall. So that's going to have to come up with either a committee of the whole meeting or a council meeting for discussion as to what plan we are proposing. I do have to leave that for a couple of I just I know it would be for the firm's good completeness. And the last is that there's a word missing in number seven, which was surveys external I know they call it external. That includes polling by external agencies. We've talked about because we have we have people who come out, we have people who have some surveys, but we often have a great group of people who we don't get and we wanted to touch them in our determination for all of that was to occur before we actually made final decisions on pool, arena, and so on. But with those changes, I'm pleased to move this. I just refreshed it, so okay. I want to see if that covers everything. I think so. Okay, so Councilor Memorial. So just so that I'm clear here that the resolution it, it's it's not the green light to go ahead with major repairs and stuff that's within the operational budget and the planning. Well we may or may not be but there are the four repairs. The arena roof was estimated to be between ten and fifteen thousand dollars, as I recall. West wall bracing was three thousand dollars. The external safety items for the V members, the most expensive, I think it was fifteen thousand dollars. But we thought if we got grazers or somebody in, they might be able to do it even cheaper. And the CO2 was $6,000. So the total value of that was somewhere around thirty dollars or $35,000. And every single one is a significant safety item that we have no choice on in, my, in I think, when we discuss it. Right? Yes, no? I mean, yes, they should be done sooner rather than later. Um, it's a bit... They don't all have to be done in the end. Okay. So I guess my question is, um, is how is that going to impact, impact the recreation budget? Well, we're, we're actually going to be way ahead on recreation because our pool is going to be significantly lower than we thought in terms of what we have to supplement. I think we already have budget we're for that. that. Yeah. Until the end of August, so all of those expenses will come. But, but we're not going to open it on the 1st of September. Well, it's not looking like that. This ability to figure that out. Right. Yeah, so I, I think we can find more things there. I think that's a big probably discussion on that after we get some of this information. As right. Well, so, okay. For the discussion, okay. all in favor? Oh, um, oh, sorry. Right? Yeah, you did. I'm very sorry. I it. It's all good. It's all good. It's no big deal. Um, one of the things that I would like, we, we, you know, the Swan Valley Recreation uh, Commission. Um, I put this kindly. Well, it's winding up because we have a lack of interest. So 
Um, but I would like us to consider redoing that for the town of Swanigar. I would like us to consider, for lack of a better word, contracting out to somebody else the management or detail of that, not management in terms of, of employment, but the, the decisions with regard not to capital expenditures, but certainly with respect to how recreation looks. I think it's something that we would end up spending a lot of time on. I don't think it's necessarily our way. And so I would like to start the process of designing what that would look like. Not much different, I think, than the Recreation Commission, except that we would be funded, we would be secure, and we would, um, and it would be supported. But other than that, it would be the same. Other than that, we think. I think that that's probably more of a discussion that we'll have at our next town meeting. Sure, we had to refer that to the town meeting. That was part of the piece I alluded to, but we didn't get into it. Right. It comes to the way this time. Okay. So uh, that's good then. That can go to the town meeting. That's fine. Okay, thank you. 8.5. Resolve the lots 35 and 36 of Plan 2372, Dolphin Land Town's office, be sold to Dennis Adamshuk. And Carla Vompe for the sum of three thousand dollars. Moved by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion. Is that three thousand dollars each? Uh, that's the total amount for both. Um, Council Memorial. Um, so clarification: This is an additional lot that they're buying. Yeah, so, so. It is north, north of that. We did have a call yesterday as well about another potential offer coming down that. We just didn't get, get anything. We were aware that this was coming to council tonight. So this is just north of the property that they already purchased. And, and then that, that's, I guess, plan. The two lots, like 35, 36, are sold as one since it's registered as 419 because uh, they're sold together. They can pairs and make one residential lot versus. Um, so, this is an additional, I guess, two or residential lot that they, in addition to what they previously purchased? Yes. Okay. I, I guess that was, I have my question is along the lines of Councillor Morio. When we say that it's lots 35 and 36, but it only has one address of 419, means that it's one lot. Right. So my question really is, and if someone was to buy this piece of property and they are to build on it, would they be needing to get a variance and maybe Councillor Delorier would know better because it's sold as one lot or one address but list as two lots, does that mean that they need a variance to build on both of those lots if it's exceeding the size? Councillor Gloria, would you know that question? Mute. Uh, no, I, I don't know the answer definitively to that. Uh, is Derek in the room? Does he, would he know? No. I can find that, I just don't know that one on hand. Because originally those lots were trailer lots, but as a residential home, they're not wide enough for a residential home. So, so then two lots are put together to make one residential lot. So in my mind, I guess we're selling it as one lot number is 419. Therefore, the person who's buying it would assume that it's a full lot and would not need. But, but uh, I'm kind of concentrate. Uh, I, I'm, I'm baffled by this. Um, yeah. Firstly, I think you, the zoning process is pretty clear. You have to build within the parameters of a lot, not a residential address. I don't know why we have one residential address for two lots. That doesn't make sense to me, and it shouldn't happen. Um, secondly, um, Why would you? The reason we give discounted amounts is so that people will build on a property, right? That's what I've been told. 
I, I, I'm coming to another point in a minute, which you can almost guess is coming. But if they're building next to themselves, what are they building? And what is the development plan? And we don't have any of that. So I, 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 I would have a difficult time agreeing to this. More importantly, I thought we were going to develop, a plan. and I know we've got other things to eat up our time, but I thought we were going to develop a policy on this so we wouldn't have to go through this blind every time. It makes me ill having to decide this on an ad hoc basis time after time after time. I don't understand why we keep doing that to ourselves. Council Morrill. Um, also, the, the, the lots are, they're both two separate assess laws from what I can see here. So, so both for the community. I'm, I'm just looking at the one from the previous, and it, it's still the final report from the lawyers in the Catholic Sports 423, but lots 37 and 38 are still listed as a legal description in the final report. Yeah, so we're looking at a combined total of 13,000. 800 and some per, so it's like 26,000 assessed value for that package of the two lots. So, 24,600. Okay, so I guess if there's further discussion, okay, to the question then, Councilor. And does the administration know when did they buy the original two lots? How long ago? What's the relevancy of that? Um, like if they got, like if the house crazy, if they got bought the original property at a discounted rate to be building something, and the period of time if they haven't built anything yet, and now they're looking for more, what's the plan? Yes, the resolution um, was February the fourth. The addendum to the agreements that was in April of this year, so it just happened this spring. I call this. It it was a lengthy process. It was dragging on for quite some time, if I remember correctly. Further discussion? Sounds complicated. All in favor? Opposed? That's defeated. I think that uh, out of this, Councilor Gray is absolutely right. Administration, when they can, and talk to Mr. Poole that we need to have some type of uh, policy or, or something that we can look at in order to, to be a little bit more um, consistent. I realize we do get different offers on properties, but um, this makes it awkward as far as this, if this table goes, but we're trying to make this decision. And having a conversation around split lots and, and, and addresses and, and how it is and, and the land titles, I think, is is not an easy conversation to have in such a short period of time. Go we go to nine point one. Security cameras. Uh, is there some update on that? Yeah, just to request to have that. There isn't a whole pile to update on that. We did have one company come and screw around and you know just kind of see what was what we've got and what we're looking for. Um, they're be ready to give a proposal when we, we go to that stage. Um, there are a couple other companies, but that was you know our former CAO was looking at for that project. So it's just one of the things that we will we will continue on um, as we get the time to do that. Okay. Any questions on that? Are they looking to provide us with a full bucket formal verbal report or a written report that they can send us or a proposal? <laughs> They'll put out a formal like, request for a proposal when we're ready to go with that when we know exactly kind of more along the lines of what we're looking for. Okay. All right, 10.1. Resolve it to that in the let me start that again. Resolve that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts check number 26400 to 26438 for a total of 191,402 cents. Check number 26397 was voided due to wrong pay. Payroll accounts check number 46942, number 4700 for a total of 97,143 and 11 cents. Moved by. Councilor Morgan, seconded by 
Council of Grays, discussion. Council Morio. Um, so, in relation to check number 26418, um, the whole that release, so I am assuming that all the deficiencies um, at the well building have now been complete and that, uh, that the project is now completed to our satisfaction. Okay. Yeah, Terry, so. Mr. Ganita, do you want to respond to that question? We received a notification from Associated Engineering to release the whole back, so I guess we're counting on Associated Engineering to make that determination. Does that answer your question? It makes me leery that when we have a third party or um, the engineering group tell us to release funds when there's maybe potentially deficiencies yet without that maybe Derek would have or Derek would have the answers here. But uh, we went through that uh, situation already with the recreation center where our consultant told us to release the holdbacks and then there were still deficiencies. So I um, Darren. It was like I know Darren had talked about I think it was our last council meeting that he attended the one before that there were still a few. So if he can just confirm that yeah. those remaining deficiencies were Councilor Gray. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I, I, I'm not really concerned with the back of the issue with Jackson because I think they're they are looking. Um, but I do have two questions. The first is um, nine one one the enhanced nine one one seventeen thousand nine forty two. What does that entail? Is that capital? That's is that our annual study. assessment? Is that a quarterly assessment? That's the annual. Um, Invoice from the city of Brandon to provide the enhanced 911 service to the town center. How do they calculate that? It's on a per telephone property basis. So it's a province wide formula. Right. It was not something that we all agreed on, but that's what it has been, I guess, came up with similar to what the RCP like the uh, price <laughs> levies are. Do we have access to how they like not just how they calculate in terms of levy, but what they're spending it on? Because if the city of Brandon make a profit on, I'm going to be disappointed. CFO Ganita, can you respond to that? Do you have any comment on that? Mr. Ganita. I'm having a hard time hearing a lot of what the, most people are saying. Could you repeat that, please? Yes, uh, Mr. Kanita, thank you. I'm just wondering if we can find out what the actual expenditures on the 911 are by the City of Brandon and their, and our proportionate, share, what their total revenues are, so that we can determine whether or not they're making a profit. Because if they're making a profit, I'm going to be very, 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 very unhappy. Not with us, and not with the issuing of a check. If we get the if we get the bill, we pay the bill. That's fine. But I think we need to go back on the other side of this because that's not the way we expect our partnerships to run. And I would expect to be a part junior partner the other way. Okay. Further discussion. Oh, well, there's one, one other point I was going to ask. Okay. Which is the June 18th payment to Adobe? Why are we paying it monthly? It's a pretty significant saving by paying it annually, and we're going to do it every. We've done it every month for fifteen years. I would think we're going to do it annually. It's a yearly subscription paid monthly. From what I when I was looking, it was on uh, Mr. Cole's computer. So is it? Is, yes, that's okay. when I read the invoice. Well, it's like more than I paid, but maybe it's because there's more. Okay, it's all good. That was the only question. Council White. Well, just let me finish this issue. What Nothing to do with checks. Oh, okay. Okay, we'll get off the point then. All right, for the discussion, all in favor? Opposed? It's carried. We skipped nine foot one, sir. Uh, I mean, no, we didn't. We talked about cameras? Yes, yes. Yeah. Where was I? I don't, I don't know. know. You were sitting in the room. Oh, uh -huh. I don't think I asked. Uh, You're asking us to go back to 9.1? I am, sir. 
Oh, and we'll see you at the church. <laughs> 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 well, a reconsideration. I think. Well, where, where are we <laughs> with the campus for our community uh, be a uh, protective technology follow up in crime? Do, do you want uh, Miss Hagelman to repeat herself? I'd just like you to speak a little louder and be truthful. <laughs> So we had our one company come, um, walk around, have a look, see what our needs are, um, and we're hoping to get a couple more to come and do the same thing, and then we'll issue a formal request for proposal for once we know exactly what we need. Do you have any any idea on the numbers of cameras you're talking about? They're going to see what they think we need and then do a proposal. <coughs> yeah, we're just you know kind of looking. We need to know what's out there already. Um, who's got what's happening. So we're just, just kind of gathering information right now. We don't have details on what that's going to look like. But you'll be getting some data back from these two companies. Well, yeah, we'll issue a request. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Mike. 10.2. Resolve financial statements for the six months ending June 30th, 2020, be adopted as received, moved by Councilor Gray, seconded by Councillor Delorier, discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Result of the Town of Small River Draft Consolidated Financial Statements. For the year ended December 31st, 2019, be approved, and the independent auditors report thereon be received. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Deputy Mayor Wayne Tony. This is what we had earlier tonight. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> Resolve that bylaw number 15, 2020, be filed the town of Swan River to amend the town of Swan River zoning bylaw number 9, 2004, to occupy lots 33.2 land, 1017-Dolphin Land Tennis Office from RMH residential mobile home zone to RT residential two family zone be read a first time. Moved by Councilor Dolorio, seconded by Councilor White. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Number 13, resolve, resolve that pursues the sections 152 and 3 of the Municipal Act Council to go to committee and close the meeting to the public to discuss uh, recreation and also uh, personnel. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Gray. <laughs> um, all in favor? Let's carry. We're in the camera. We'll take a recess and then we'll go right to it. Resolved in this regular meeting, the house now be adjourned. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by the Councillor Mario. Speak all in favor? All in go ahead and speak on it. Hit the road. No, I want to speak on your list. If you leave the motion is lost. Well, you'll be here on your mind. Your car will be just so four score and seven years ago. All fair. Can't be. Run the clock.